hello and thank you for joining me on this Tap and Grooves teaser transcription lesson here at No Treble. Um, it is a teaser for my latest book, Tap and Grooves Volume 1, which is a collection of 27 tap and grooves that emulate the sound of a rhythm section all on your bass, just you and your bass. You can create these uh, amazing uh, grooves and they go from easy until very difficult. And uh, it is also a teaser for the course, the practice group that I will be teaching over at Ari's Bass Blog starting uh, September 21st of this month. And uh, all the details and the, the link is in the description. And that's a 10 week course. Where we'll be learning some of these grooves together as well as some other original ones and some more technique behind tapping, how to do it. Uh, so you can do it on your own, especially during the pandemic when uh, you know, you might be still locked inside a lot. Uh, it's a great time to explore this kind of stuff. Anyways, so you've seen the groove at the beginning of the video. Now just a little uh, explanation about how to do it. Uh, now, I use one of these uh, Groove Gear fret wraps. They're great. They're, they're dampeners for your strings. You don't need to use it, but I definitely prefer it. Um, it really helps, you know, manage any uh, extra ringing when you're doing tapping and both your hands are, are busy at the, that time. Okay, so you're going to take your right hand, first and second finger, and what you're going to do is you're going to tap uh, the 17th fret, which is G on the D string, and then C on the G string, like this, your one and two, and you're going to just tap eighth notes. Now, eighth notes means one and two, and you're subdividing the beat in two, so it's one and two and three and four and one. Practice doing it and saying the ands, and then take away the ands. See if you can just count the beats and feel the beats. One, two, three, four. All right? And this is all the, the uh, transcription that you can see in the article. Uh, or, the, or if this is on YouTube, you can see the link to the article, which has the transcription. Okay? And then your bass is going to play a line, okay? So while that's going on, your bass is going to play a progression that goes... Uh, it's in C major, and it goes the one chord to the six chord, and then it'll do the four, and the five, and then the one again. Okay? So before you start playing the rhythm, which actually goes one and two and three and four, now that you're tapping that once again, right? One and two and three and four, and one and two and three and four, one and two and, that's an A, 12th fret, all in the transcription, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, to the five chord, and three, and four, and one, and two. Now this might be a little tricky at first to get with the right hand. So my suggestion is, start by just playing one of the notes, which is the C in the left hand, while doing uh, the right hand. And first, we're just gonna play on the one. Just practice playing on the one like this. So one and two and three. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Just build it up slowly, brick by brick. You want a strong foundation. When you're trying to put parts together and you're coordinating like that, two, three, four. And the next uh, rhythm that comes in on the left hand is on the and of two. So that would be one and two and four. One and two and. Maybe just try the and of two. One and two and three. And if you gotta slow it down to a crawl, like one and two and three and four and one and two and, that's fine. Then you put those two together. So it's on the one and then on the and of two. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And just see if you can just keep doing that until it's just a piece of cake. You don't have to think about it too hard. You can have a conversation while you're doing it. And then see if you can switch the notes, okay? So maybe practice the other bass notes separately as well. So practice the second bass note, which is A, which is the sixth chord, with, with the pattern on the right hand. And just stay there for a while. Then practice the four on its own. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. 
back to the five on its own. The idea is you piece things together slowly because sometimes the whole is gonna seem a little bit unachievable at times and so you just gotta break it down because basically, you know, whenever something seems too difficult, you can always break it into small achievable steps which then amalgamate into the whole that you're looking to get. And that's something you can take with you whatever you're learning. If you're learning uh, how to play a Michael Brecker solo or whatever, you could do the same concept break it down into small chunks and then piece it all together. All right, so when you finally piece it all together, you'll get this. Four, see if you can count. Three, four, one, two, while you play. Four, one, two, three, four. Once again, I hope you uh, enjoyed this quick lesson, and if you're interested in getting the book, you can check it out, and the link is in the description below. It's on Amazon. Uh, and then, of course, love to see you at, at uh, the uh, practice group over at Ari's Base Blog. We're going to be exploring tapping grooves, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to open up your mind. Whether or not you want to take this on the bandstand, it's going to open up your mind and your ears and your ability to coordinate. When you're playing a very simple gig, your, your ears are going to be much more open to hear, hey, what is you know someone else in the band playing? All this stuff. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be really helpful to you. And that's it. I've gone on for too long. See you around.